Thank you. Hi, everyone. Wherever you're tuning in from right now, good morning, good afternoon. It's great to be here. Um, that uh, introduction was a bit of a mouthful, as I hear it myself. Um, long story short, I teach dance to um, many different students. I specialize in ballet, but I also teach creative movement to um, youth and children in school settings, community settings, and to older adults in long-term care homes, um, and most recently to uh, older adults uh, directly into their homes through an app. So uh, in a nutshell, we are focused on getting Canadians uh, moving, um, regardless of accessibility, access, um, and uh, all of our programs are currently free. Um, so in order to keep these programs going, in addition to teaching dance, I also help to evaluate the programs that we're running and the classes that we're running to make them more sustainable and find ways to, like I said, keep Canadians moving through dance. So um, I'm, I'm here for a very short period of time. Um, and I have a lot to share, and I have actually never shared this information in this short of time, so bear with me. Um, I will at the very end, I just have one slide um, with my contact information and a, and a couple of um, links on it. Um, you can feel free to take a screenshot of it and then um, feel free to reach out to me if any of the information that I talk about today is of interest or, or if you want more information. We can definitely chat um, off webinar as well. Um, so I'm talking about dance today, but we can't talk about dance without dancing, without trying some dancing. Don't be afraid. You can do it from wherever you are. Um, seated is totally fine. Standing is great. Um, the way that you move today, please move in the way that feels best for you. It can be bigger movements if you have space. It can also be smaller movements. You'll see um, that this activity is um, very adaptable. So feel free to participate in any way that you'd like. I'm just going to shift my screen. Hopefully you can see me. Um, I am coming to you from my home today. We're doing a bit of a hybrid here in downtown Toronto. I'm at home sometimes and I'm on site at Canada's National Ballet School sometimes. Um, but today I'm at home, so just imagine that we're in the beautiful studios on Jarvis Street, downtown Toronto. Um, and we'll start by uh, participating in a bit of a movement uh, activity. It's called the Body Park Countdown. It's one of my favorites. I take it everywhere I go and everybody loves it. So fingers crossed that you love it too. Um, all you have to do is start by choosing four different body parts. I'm going to choose my head, my shoulders, my knees, and my arms. You can choose the same ones as me or you can choose your own. Because you're looking at me and following me, it might be easier to do the same ones, but feel free to explore and experiment and try your own as well. We're going to move each body part that you've chosen eight times. So I'm going to start with my head and I'm going to move it eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I move on to my shoulders eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. My knees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And my arms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Keep in mind, even if you chose the same body parts, you can move them differently. So I was moving my shoulders one at a time. You can move both. Your shoulders could move forward and back, or they could roll. So each body part has a different way of moving and has a multiple different ways of moving. So feel free to adjust and move in your own way. I see, okay, just making sure that wasn't for me. Great, so we'll try that through. We'll start with our first body part all the way to our fourth body part, each one eight times. I'll give you an instruction. It sounds like this, ready, set, here we go, and then we'll start. Ready, set, here we go. First body part, two, three, four, five, six. Second body part goes one, two, three, four, five, six, 
third body part. One, two, three, four, five, six. Fourth body part. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Excellent. I can imagine how fantastic that was. I'm going to put on some music and we'll try it to the music. Sometimes um, with this wonderful web world, online world that we're living in, the music can get a little bit glitchy. So I'm not going to speak, but I'll do my best miming for you so that you know where we're going. All right. continue on. We did eight movements per body part. Now we'll do four. Starting with your first body part. One, two, three, four. Second body part for four. Third body part. And fourth body part. So it's getting a little bit faster. I'm going to keep going just because um, of time. We'll take it to two now. So we did eight. We did four. Now we'll try two. Starting with your first body part. One, two. Second body part. One, two. Third body part, one, two, fourth body part, one, two. I'm already forgetting. That's okay, not to worry. Um, the last one, we did eight, four, two, and then we'll do one. So uh, it'll go continuous all through, but let's try just one slowly. Ready, set, first body part, one, second body part, one, third body part, one, fourth body part, one. Try that a little faster. Ready, set, here we go. One, 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 one. Try it faster. Ready, set, here we go. One, 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 one. Okay, when I play the music, that might end up very looking very abstract and that's totally fine, happens every time. Um, remember, we started off really slow. We had eight counts, eight, uh, a, a phrase of eight, to do all those movements, and now we only have a phrase of one. So it makes sense that it's it's tricky to move through that time. Um, so let's do one rehearsal without the music, and then we'll try it with the music. So we start with eight. Ready, set, first body part. Goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Second body part, two, three, four, five, six. Third body part, one, two, three, four, five, six. Fourth body part, one, Two, three, four, five, six, four. One, two, three, second body part. One, two, three, third body part. One, two, three, fourth body part. One, two, counts of two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, 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 one. Okay, hopefully that felt okay. We'll do one, the phrases of one twice at the very end, just to give you another chance another try at it. So that's what it'll look like, but with the music. We'll go all the way through eight, four, two, and then one. Let's give it a try. so much 
and it'll come about when I talk a little bit about why we do what we do and, and what our programs offer. But this activity in itself, it's a memory game for sure, remembering which body parts you've chosen and which number you're on, but it offers a lot of option, a lot of choice. So whether I'm doing this with a group of children, youth, adults, older adults, everyone gets to choose what feels best for them. So the way I move my arms could also be like this, could also be like this. So um, everybody gets to choose what feels best for them, but is still successful at what the task was for the activity. Um, you could move your feet one way or just tap them on the floor. And I find it allows for participants who um, are maybe a little bit more reserved, a little bit more, more nervous, especially if it's right at the beginning. You may have been feeling that way at the start, um, that it just offers that little bit of a, a safety zone, a little bit of a safety net um, to participate. Um, you can also choose the body parts that aren't as big or showy. That's fine too. Um, I usually do this in groups and allow participants to stay in their group so they don't feel what's happening around them. And the best part is that it always ends in laughter, good laughter, because we get to one and it, everyone just kind of turns into a bit of a melting marshmallow with their movement. So it's a bit of an icebreaker. We're starting to warm ourselves up. We're isolating our body parts. We're starting to move in coordination. All of those things you know. Um, but it, it, it's a bit of an icebreaker and it, I find, opens everyone up to what the next activity is. Okay, so thank you for moving with me there. I just have a, a couple other things to share with you before we finish up. Um, so why dance? Why creative movement? Why do we do what we do? The work that we've been doing through the community um, has been going on for about, I think I always say five years, but the years have progressed. So I think we're about seven years in now. Um, and it's grown immensely. Um, like I said, we're doing work in schools, community centers, and now branching a little bit more into programs for older adults. But the reasoning and the research is all the same. Um, we're motivating people to be physically active and dance offers um, another option um, for that. It uh, also offers self-expression, um, affirmation of identity, creativity. Um, and we, uh, a couple years ago, started to do a bit of a research study on how dance and creative movement um, impact the fundamental movement skills or how they connect. Um, we had to stop the study due to the pandemic, unfortunately, but we're hoping to pick that up again. But there's a lot of research in sport specifically, and um, we strongly believe that movement, creative movement and dance and sport can work together and, uh, and provide that physical literacy and understanding for children, youth, all the way to older adulthood. Um, like I mentioned with that activity we just did, there are multiple options um, and opportunities for success. We have a number of activities that we do that are cross-curricular, and uh, I can speak a little bit more to that. If that's something you're interested in, we can definitely connect about that as well. But we have um, units of study focused on the life cycle of the frog, the rock cycle, um, I'm just naming a few off the top of my head, um, geographic regions of Canada, um, there's one on poetry and language, um, and then a number of activities, even short ones, that we've created. Um, there's ways to expand them into curriculum learning. We have one called Open, Close, Cross, that's really just um, jumping or using your arms open, closed, cross, and, and creating a bit of a phrase, a bit of a, a sequence. Um, that we've realized can um, enrich patterning really well. 
Um, I did a training a couple weeks ago and they talked a lot about coding and how that activity could um, help with coding. So there's ways of, of adding that curriculum learning uh, through the activities. Um, and then dance is also an accessible form of physical literacy for people of all physical and cognitive abilities. So um, ensuring that everyone can participate regardless of their ability, regardless of their um, financial access um, and providing different options. Like I said, you can participate seated, you can participate standing, you can use your arms, you can use your feet. Um, so lots of options for every activity. Um, the other thing that we talk about a lot, and I should have mentioned at the very beginning, um, is that there's no right or wrong way to move as long as everyone's being safe in what they're doing. Um, so I, I did mention move in the way that feels best for you, move safely, um, but there is no right or wrong way to move when we're thinking about creative movement. Um, how, where we initiate the move from, we might all be the same. Maybe you started with your head because I did, but maybe instead of your shoulders, you chose another body part, um, which was totally fine. Maybe we all initiate the movement from the same spot, but listening to the music and hearing what your body is telling you might take that experience in a different way, in a different direction. Um, creative movement gives dancers the opportunity to generate their own movement. It contributes to the development of physical literacy, which is what we're here talking about today, understanding how we're moving, understanding why we're moving, what this means, articulating every movement that we're doing. Um, it builds motivation, confidence, and physical competence. It encourages young people to value and take responsibility for their physical and artistic engagement. And what we really want is for these children and youth at their young age to find interest, to find passion in movement that encourages um, and inspires them to stay with it throughout um, their lives. The number of older adults I teach that say, I can't dance, I'm not a dancer. I used to dance when I was young, but I can't dance anymore. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Um, am I over time? Stop me if I'm, I think I have a few more minutes. Um, so um, finding ways to keep that engagement going. Um, the drop off for dance in youth is usually around 12 years of age. So how can we um, get children and youth excited about dance, excited about movement, that they find ways to keep that in their lives as they get older? Um, dance is a first step in developing fundamental movement skills. Um, and creative movement really helps to develop that. I'm sure you know about those fundamental movement skills. Uh, that was a huge part of the research that we were doing a couple years ago. Um, testing the, the running, throwing a ball against the wall, um, marching, gliding, I think we call it, we call it galloping. Um, so all of those fundamental movement skills, how can creative movement support those and how can the fundamental movement skills support the further development of creative movement into dance. And then creative movement also allows young dancers um, and uh, young children and young youth to um, further explore and develop skills that will help them take on other forms of dance in the future. Creative movement, we focus on that idea of creativity, creating your own movement, exploring movement. And then as children get older, we start to look at things like hip hop, um, classical Indian dance, ballet. There's so many to name, um, but those forms of dance require specific terminology, specific steps. So we want to create that foundation nice and early so that um, children can learn those um, skills. Um, so in the, the next few minutes, I'll just mention what we have, um, um, what we have 
sorry, you have, I see there's questions. Do you want me to, to pause here for a second? No, no, keep going, keep going. <laughs> we apologize, we're not trying to distract you. Keep going. No, no, that's okay, that's okay. Um, uh, so we have a number of programs. We ourselves provide free workshops to schools across Canada. Right now they're virtual. Um, and we will continue with the virtual workshops, but these are 30 minutes. We zoom in or um, Google Meet in and um, provide those workshops. But we also have a number of resources available online through our Reach platform. Um, that platform has um, classes that we call Dance on Demand. So they are um, usually about 25 to 30 minute teacher to camera instructing and teaching um, a dance lesson. And there's usually about three or four connected to one theme. Um, so those are available. We also have what we call an activity library where similar to the one I did today um, are available for you to open. They have lesson plans, information. There's a video that shows the activity happening. Um, but that there's a number, it's, it's a library of kind of quick um, one-off dance activities. Um, and then we also have our cross-curricular units. These are a little bit longer and they're meant to be over a number of weeks um, or classes. And those are, as I was mentioning, directly connected to curriculum. So the life cycle of the frog is in there. Um, the geographic regions of Canada, there's a dance for that one. Poetry. Um, the rock cycle, and there's one more that I'm forgetting, but they're units. So there's about four or five lessons with each of them um, and provide movement based um, kind of storytelling along with them. Um, the last one that I'll mention, and again, I do have one slide that um, I think I should be able to share in just one second, um, that uh, is our sharing dance choreography. This happens every year. It's a national dance party. Um, it happens in May or June, depending on the province. Um, it used to be in person, but uh, we've moved to a digital broadcast, which is actually pretty nice. I see my time, one minute to go. Um, so that uh, national broadcast um, happens and is available for everyone to participate. It's a piece of choreography. There we go. I'm just going to stick this up here so that you have it. Um, it's a piece of choreography that um, we commissioned two Canadian artists to create and uh, develop. And then everyone across Canada learns it and dances it together during the national broadcast. So I put up my email address, my information. Hopefully you can see it. Um, we have a newsletter that's available on our, our website. It's nbs-enb.ca. As I mentioned, we have free work of virtual workshops. That new term starts in March. Webinars, if any of this is, is of interest to you, just send me a quick email and I'll send you direct links. Um, and then as I mentioned, that Reach Space hosts um, all of those videos and activities for you to um, engage in movement and dance. Okay, I will stop there. <laughs> <laughs>